Open Banking is here. An opportunity for people and businesses to use their transaction data to access better financial products and services. Step into an ecosystem. New apps and offerings from fintechs and financial institutions. Created to empower users, but only with your consent. Perhaps you're paying too much for an overdraft. Authorise a comparison app to analyse your account and find a better fit based on your specific spending. Or bring open banking into your business. Connect your bank account and accounting platform to issue payment reminders, keep records up to date and spend less on making and receiving payments. Of course, you are always in control over who can view your data. You can manage access at any time. Open Banking, the future of money, where you're in control. Hello and good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Vladimir Pintia. I'm representing here the Saltage. So Saltage is a leading uh, open banking vendor, uh, not only in Europe, but also globally. Uh, so uh, let me present you a bit of what we are looking to see in future in terms of open banking. So open banking is with us already for at least three years uh, in life. So let's, let's check how it looks and feels. Uh, hopefully we'll see some slides. Um, so Saltage was founded in 2013. We are a licensed AISP uh, provider uh, within the European Union um, and UK. So we've started in UK initially. Uh, right now we are a leading technical service provider who uh, tries to um, marry uh, two different aspects of open banking. On one hand are the uh, third party providers. So any business that would like to get access to the account information or to start to initiate payments. And on the other hand is the uh, compliance solution with all of the banks, e-money institutions and everyone who is providing those payment accounts. So what we've been focusing on is to build an infrastructure, a gateway we, where we can both consume information, provide the new rails for payment initiation and of course uh, help banks to provide those critical APIs for, for making that possible. So why open banking is green? So uh, many speakers talk about the user experience, about the impact on the customer, about bringing new uh, means of business to, to them. But what we want, we want to change uh, the paradigm. We want to make payments available to everyone, independent of which type of business they are doing. So this is why we want to go away from cards. We want to go uh, and use the, the modern means of communication, which are APIs. And we want to do a seamless integration between applications, between businesses, and between financial institutions. So what do we do for that? Uh, so we've started uh, as a global data aggregator. So some of our colleagues mentioned that in order to get access to data, you need to take it from somewhere. So we've been uh, doing that web scrapping technologies, uh, integration with uh, legacy APIs and so on. But soon we realized that we have capabilities to move even further, to do uh, the direct integrations with the bank, to do that uh, seamless communication, provide those great user experience about uh, which the speakers are talking about. So um, literally provide the open banking to everyone. So it's independent of which use case you are building. Is it a personal finance manager? Is it a lending solution? Is it a merchant that would like to collect money on, to, uh, on his online services and so on? So we help everyone to become firstly compliant, secondly get access to those modern APIs, get access to those modern, modern SDKs and build those applications. So our product line is covering both of those aspects where we help financial institutions, banks, and EMIs with a uh, compliance solution, um, which enables strong customer authentication. So uh, the customer is always in control of which data he's sharing, and the data is never accessed without his consent, and the verification for third-party providers. 
and the main product, which gets, uh, which which basically builds those new revenue streams and so on, is the uh, open banking gateway. So the uh, data aggregation platform that normalizes the APIs across banks uh, allows you to access account information and initiate payments. If you are a merchant, if you are a uh, business uh, finance application, if you are a lender, and so on. And of course, the data doesn't cost a lot if it's raw uh, and if you cannot interpret it at all. So here we do uh, add some value-added services as data, data enrichment APIs. So we try to make sense of that data. We try to make it uh, valuable for your business. <coughs> so the compliance solution components uh, basically with which we come to help banks become compliant. First of all is a uh, API. An API built on top of specifications, on top of standards within the European Union or globally. Uh, then, in order to get access to those API, any third party provider needs to identify themselves. So they uh, need to have a license, they need to present themselves as a trustworthy uh, player on the market. So for that purpose, we do have the third party provider verification layer. Of course, nothing of that makes sense if no one can use those APIs, so providing best documentation, state-of-the-art sandboxes covering most of the use cases and guiding the developers, guiding those uh, technical engineers to, to, to be able to integrate with those APIs uh, is very important here. And of course, uh, banks, banks, EMIs, everyone that would join into this network. So uh, as we saw uh, in, in the recent years, uh, most uh, developed banks or most developed EMIs, the newer banks, how they call them, uh, have been providing APIs for ages. So they've been technical first, and then they've been building their businesses around those. Uh, what we want to help is to uh, build on top, on top of the technology for those EMIs and ASPSPs, but also add a network effect to that. So basically, we're doing specifications and standards, but we are also providing you a marketplace. We are providing you uh, visibility to who are the players on the market, who will consume your APIs, what are their customers expecting from you in order for you to provide the best experience possible. Developer portals, because again, we are talking about technical capabilities here, developer portals needs to be state of the art as well. So uh, giving, uh, as a next step, not only access to third party providers, but also access to any other means of business. So we are talking about the next step, which is open finance, such that uh, even medical providers, so you have uh, a clinic that would like to provide you services, so you could do that uh, provision of the services in, in, in a very simple manner, so uh, integrate it within a mobile application for you, for any customer of yours to pay by bank transfer or by any modern means of, of payments. Uh, we do provide uh, those live environments uh, for banks, uh, for AISP, PISPs, uh, so again, um, all, all of the players which are regulated currently on, on the market and we hope to, to, to keep this trend and bring more businesses, more, more use cases to the market as well. So we have some stats which we've collected for the last couple of years uh, on the availability of the APIs, on, on their quality uh, within the European Union. So as we can see, the, the mecca of uh, FinTech, right now UK is on the leading position, but we do also see that the technical uh, capitals of the Europe are following after that. So we have Czech Republic, we have Netherlands. So those are the, the, the smaller countries that basically bring all of the technical capabilities, unite all of those neo banks, uh, and, and, and basically are leading within the user experience on the market. As I mentioned, we need to verify all of the players on the market. We need to make sure that we are not giving access to the data, to the sensitive data of our customers, uh, to any unregulated or any not licensed, not verified uh, player. So for those purposes, we've built a TPP verifier layer where we can make sure that the license is still active, the license is granted within a specific country of European Union, and also make sure that uh, we are up to the challenge to keep that access uh, audited and controlled at every time. 
Strong customer authentication is the main requirement which ensures the security of our customers, which ensures that uh, the consent will be collected explicitly, that it will be linked, as uh, one of our colleagues mentioned, to a specific device, that we will be always able to track and confirm that that person indeed has authorized that access. Uh, being it for the account information uh, that, that he owns in a specific bank or EMI, or when authorizing a payment. And moving forward, it's also applicable when you're authorizing a subscription, when you're authorizing a recurrent payment, a variable recurrent payment, so you can pay your utilities automatically. So at all of those steps, it is very important to, to ensure that that's the person who has authorized that, and we can trace it back to his device and make sure that no one else was using it at that moment. Consent management system, because we're talking about banks, we're talking about e-money institutions, it is always important for them to have that interface where any of their end customers can, can come back and review to whom he granted access, when it was done, for which period of time is he able to revoke granularly uh, consent for each specific application that he have ever authorized. We see these technologies right now available at Facebook, at Google, so the, the big tech companies who are very keen on their audit, in, on their privacy of their customers. So same, same concept should be applied by banks and EMIs as well. Main issues when consuming those APIs, of course, uh, are always variable. So we do have uh, poor quality of APIs where banks didn't commit enough resources to basically build a reliable API, build a highly available API. We do see issues with customer journey where uh, users are redirected back and forth in between interfaces, in between uh, portals to basically, on one hand, collect their consent, on the other hand, show them uh, the payment attributes that they would like to initiate, and in the end, uh, to, to confirm that they would actually want to go back to the application they came for in the first place. So this is important, to build it seamless, to build it, um, to provide that best user experience on top of existing technologies, on top of the uh, app to app redirects on top of the uh, fact that the integration can be done using some modern SDKs. So you don't need to, to re reinvent the, the, the connection or, or, or the, the uh, integration. You need to be sure that you've uh, launched a module. That module will handle everything for you within your application. And delays and friction, of course, uh, because banks uh, are, and, and, and the existing EMIs that we see them in, in uh, Europe are uh, built on top of legacy technologies, are built on top of outdated technologies. It basically takes them forever to, to, to do all of the uh, checks and all of the uh, verifications based on the existing regulations. So this introduces friction, this introduces the, the uh, waiting, the spinners, endless spinners in between the interfaces. And we need to make sure that that won't happen. For that, we need to use instant payment schemes. For that, we need to use uh, consent verification that is happening within that specific attempt. So for that, we need to trust those players that are working with us, uh, using cloud solutions uh, to make it available uh, as fast as possible to the end customer on his devices. We see some great uh, solutions on the market. So the, the key players, uh, as I mentioned, uh, do perform very well. So they've been building those APIs prior to any regulations. So we've heard about the open banking and PSD2 regulations soon being adopted even here in Moldova. Uh, the fact is that the biggest multinational banks have been uh, the, the uh, innovators in this space. So they are building uh, highly available APIs with very good user experience across multiple countries and regions. And we make sure to keep them accounted for that. So we are constantly monitoring their performance, we are constantly providing them feedback on, to, on top of their APIs, and we are even proposing them how they can improve those. Uh, as I mentioned, the trend uh, is already live, it's here, open banking is uh, following us everywhere we go. So my colleagues mentioned some of the neobanks like N26, Revolut, and so on. So those have been the, the, the players that e enabled th this revolution. Uh, we see that uh, smaller banks and legacy banks are also following, are not falling too far away. 
So uh, expect in, in a couple of years to see open banking omnipresent uh, in every business and every aspect of our lives. So we've, talk, we've touched on user experience. Uh, best standards, best specification do also provide uh, those guidelines on the experience for the end customers. So how the banks need to build their interfaces in order to be compliant, in order to maximize the, the accept rate of their APIs and minimize the friction and the timeouts on, on the requests. Uh, we ourselves also try to provide the best user experience uh, and uh, the best example for that is initiating a payment. So whenever you are shopping online, you would like uh, to have a comprehensive checkout page where you see what would, would you do, uh, do in the next steps. You would like to have a possibility to choose your bank, to authenticate with your banking application and basically execute that payment uh, in that moment, instantly. Receiving the, the confirmation that the money has arrived and the product that you've chosen is already uh, ship, shipping to you. Uh, we do also see that success of payments, account-to-account uh, -account transfers, or the payment initiation services within the open banking is also rising. And the, 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 mass, uh, the best movers here are the online services, are the, the, the online shops, and so on. So uh, COVID and the pandemics have helped us a lot to improve that. So uh, the adoption skyrocketed, and we see that month-by-month uh, -month payments are increased. I will skip a couple of, of slides basically to outline some, some of the benefits of using of open banking and PSD2 a, APIs. So lending use cases, accounting, uh, personal finance management, business-to-business uh, -business payments, uh, and other fintechs that can become key players on the market. Um, we do have those marketplaces that are available. So any bank, any EMI can already publish their products uh, using those added value APIs, those premium APIs within the open banking. Consuming account information makes a large difference, uh, especially in, in, in the recent times of the pandemics, where basically we cannot trust anymore the credit bureaus, we cannot trust the statements on our uh, uh, savings accounts because basically those become outdated very fast. Uh, lenders, credit bureaus have access to that lively data. They are able to monitor your progress on a daily basis. They can upsell you additional products. They can provide you better rates for any of the, of the uh, products that you are choosing from them if they have that live access to your data, if they're able to, to manage the risks on their end and build trust uh, towards the end customers. Accounting and ERP systems, uh, that's mainly for businesses where we see that any SME, as, as many of my colleagues mentioned, uh, would like to keep control of their finances. Uh, they would like to automate most of the processes, like paying salaries, paying their vendors, onboarding new suppliers, and so on. And endless business possibilities. So one of the most recent and very interesting use cases is, was basically uh, around the CO2 fingerprint. Because we become more echo, we become uh, more environment friendly, so we would like to know what is our personal impact on those. And we have several businesses uh, providing that data to both banks, businesses, and the, the end customers. And of course payments, consumer payments, retail payments, that's the biggest uh, market that we, we are going to test uh, with the open banking, with account to account transfers in the following years. So uh, we are in front of the wave, Hopefully, you will, you will uh, be ready to jump on, on it with us. So building the trust, building that, those new relationships, making the customer happy will basically uh, make your product, make your uh, bank the first choice for them at all times. Uh, because as we saw the network effect, as we saw that where the uh, audience is, where their attention is, it's where you need to put your product. Uh, next steps, of course, uh, integrating more financial institutions, bringing more players to, to, to the network, and basically enable that access to the next step of open finance, where, where anyone, from starting from government and ending with a small shop uh, or a craftsman that would be able to provide payments using open banking and provide you better insights on, on, on your interests. Feel free to contact us. 
uh, we have a great team located here in Chisinau. We do have several offices uh, in Europe. So don't hesitate, contact us. We will help you build the next open banking solution uh, wherever in the world uh, we can. Thank you.